Two teams looking to break the ice when it comes to a victory as the Georgetown Hoyas host the Maris Red Foxes in their home opener. Hi folks, I'm Jeremy Huber joined by Scott Jackson. And Scott, obviously the thing is today, do not go 0-2. No, you don't, especially you know Georgetown at home tonight, your home opener, you want to win this game in front of this home crowd, want to uh, get back to 500. And Maris, uh, they start the season with a road game of Bucknell and then this game tonight, they want to head back to Poughkeepsie uh, at 500 as well. And obviously big tonight, both teams looking for that win against each other. Let's go ahead and take a look at our players, our keys to the game of this one. Start off with the Marist Red Foxes. Yeah, well, offensive balance. Marist, even though they're going to be in the spread, they're going to be out of the shotgun, they like to run the ball as well as throw it around. They want to keep that balance, and they want to make sure uh, they keep uh, this Georgetown defense guessing. Also finishing drives, Jeremy. Last week they had uh, two field goals blocked on some extended drives. they, they got to finish him. Also some big opportunities and plays, uh, passing plays, uh, a couple drops, also uh, some missed opportunities there. Enforcing turnovers is a big thing for this uh, defense. They like to uh, get after it. And this 3-3-5 three, three, uh, defense, which is, is not very common, uh, they, they are a, a group that wants to create turnovers and set their offense up in a good place. Let's go ahead and take a look at our players to watch for the Red Foxes. We start off in the defensive backfield with senior safety Zach Adler. Zach Adler is a big playmaker. He's a guy who always seems to be around the ball. He uh, gets his hands on it. You know, it's last year uh, had seven interceptions, already have one in the first game of the season. As you see these plays he makes here, he's a guy that, uh, you know, Georgetown's got to be very careful with throwing the football downfield uh, that, that they don't uh, get Zach Adler on uh, the football. So Kyle Nolan's got to be aware of him at all times. Of course, the seven interceptions last year, obviously a guy, a ball hawk back there. Now to the defensive line for our second player to watch for the Marist Red Foxes. That would be the defensive lineman, Demetrius Williams. Yeah, Demetrius Williams, he is a, uh, he is a playmaker. He's a guy that wrecks havoc, as you see here. He's got a variety of moves. He can get around you. He can bull rush you. Uh, whatever whatever uh, you think you can stop, he can probably do something else. He's a preseason all-conference player in the Pioneer League. He was first team last year as well. So he's uh, somebody that uh, is a uh, fifth-year senior that makes a lot of plays for this uh, Marist defense. Of course, you see the 14.5 tackles for a loss. Our third player to watch for the Marist Red Foxes, that would be a wide receiver and offensive player, Matt Trolley. Yeah, Matt Trolley is a guy who is uh, – is going to get big plays for you, uh, if you know, on the Marist offense. If the Red Foxes are going to get big plays, a lot of times they're going to come from trolley preseason all-conference player. Uh, 69 receptions a year ago. And averages uh, about five catches a game uh, as well. And uh, as you see last week against Bucknell, even though they didn't get a lot going offensively, Trolley still had five catches for 59 yards in that football game. Also a red shirt senior, so he's got a lot of experience. Let's flip it over to the Georgetown Hoyas and their keys to the game. Keys to getting a win in this one. Yeah, exactly. Just one play at a time. I mean, just, you know, just try to sustain some drives, uh, you know, to keep things going. To, you know, just don't. Do too many, you know, three and outs killed Georgetown last week, and they, they can't have that. Uh, handling Maris's pass rush, we just talked about Maris, uh, Demetrius Williams in particular, but you know, Nick Foster's really good, John Brennan, those guys. Georgetown's offensive line is really going to have their hands full tonight. And you know, simple as tackling better. You see a guy like Trolley there, you know, when he's in the open field, take him down, uh, don't let him get those yards after catch. Those are the things that uh, Georgetown's defense is going to have to do a, a really good job tonight. They got to be fundamentally sound uh, with the tackling and uh, minimizing those uh, you know, plays and those big plays for Marist. And Rob Scarlotta told us about that, say, hey, look, we were in position last week, just weren't able to go ahead and make the tackles. Hopefully they'll be able to do that today. Let's go to our players to watch for the Hoyas, and we start under center. It's quarterback Kyle Nolan. You know, Kyle Nolan can make some throws. I mean, you see it here. He throws the deep ball there, a nice pass. And we'll look at this on the move. I mean, you know, that's not easy to do. <laughs> Even rolling to your right is right-handed to fit it in underneath the coverage. So Kyle Nolan, you know, he needs obviously to, to make plays, make good decisions. You see the two interceptions last week. You don't want to have that. But he had the two rushing touchdowns as well. You know, want to obviously have a higher percentage of the passes completed. Keep the chains moving. Like we said earlier, too many three and outs last week. You can't have that if you're the Hoyas tonight. You want to be successful here at home. Another weapon in the backfield for the Hoyas is a player to watch for us. It's the running back, number 35, wearing the Akabachi Memorial jersey this year, Joel Capella. Capella is explosive, you see right here, but don't let the, the you know the size uh, to fool you. He can also run you over. He's also a physical guy. He's a strong guy. He's a tough runner. 10 carries, 60 yards last week's nice, but they'd like it to be 20 carries. 
and then you'd see those yardage numbers go up higher, uh, and that's what they want to get. They want to get this kid 20 touches tonight. Capella is a playmaker. He really is the starting part of this offense, the engine, if you will, the Hoyas offense. And you mentioned playmakers. That's our third player on the defensive side of things. It's number one, Hunter Kislik, the defensive end guy, can get in the backfield, create some havoc. Yeah, Hunter Kislik, as you said, creates havoc. You know, as a captain. He's, he's a guy who uh, last week, uh, you know, la last year against Marist, I should say, had a you know, half a sack quarterback hit. He you know, makes plays, gets tackles for loss. Get, you know, guy who will be around plays. If he's making a big play, usually good things are happening for the Hoyas defense. So that's what you want to see tonight. You want to see a lot of number one around the ball and maybe get his hands on the ball as well for Georgetown. We'll see how that goes. Obviously, both these teams have some very good players, also some pretty good coaches on the sidelines. Our Marissa Pilla caught up with both of them earlier on. She got on with the head coach of the Marist Red Foxes, Jim Parody. Hi, I'm down here with head coach of Marist football, Jim Parody. Coach, tough loss last week. You guys only converted one third down on 12 drives. How much emphasis did you put on that for tonight's game? It was a major point of emphasis for us. Uh, and also, we need to be in better third down situations. We were um, in, in uh, 12 opportunities. We were more than seven yards in half of them. So we need to be better on first and second down also. And this is kind of a back-to-back -back road night game for you guys. What has that been like for your team to prepare for not only a road game, but a night road game? It's been difficult, and it's been two really different trips because the Bucknell trip, we came uh, the same day, and so we left Poughkeepsie and drove down and uh, played the game, yeah, whereas when we came down here to Georgetown, uh, we came yesterday morning, uh, was hosted by one of our alums over at his place, and then went to see the National Mall. So it's been very different trips, but it's a long day before we get the kickoff. And also, you guys are 1-8 and eight while at Georgetown. Do those numbers serve as some sort of motivation for your team? Do you have an underdog mentality at all? Well, I think that you take each year individually. And, you know, as you look at this thing, we only have 22 guys on this trip that have ever been here before. So uh, we really look at it as a first-time opportunity and not at the history. I think maybe if we're on the other end of it, uh, we might look at it differently. But right now, we look at it as a one-time opportunity. All right. Thank you so much, Coach. Have good luck today. Thank you very much. Thank you, folks. Of course, also, Marissa catching up with the head coach of the Georgetown Hoyas, Rob Scarlotta. Down here with head coach Rob Scarlotta. Coach, when talking about Ty Williams, can you really talk about the support you've gotten from everybody else in the campus community? I'll be honest with you, the whole community at large, you know, Georgetown's community has been unbelievable. Uh, President DeJoy actually went out there today and uh, spent about an hour with them. And, you know, the one thing I want to do, too, is to thank the St. Francis community. Uh, their president of their school, their athletic director, um, their players have made multiple trips to go see Ty. And, you know, I, I tried to impress upon their players when I saw them on Thursday how important it was for us that they were doing that because our guys can't get out to see them this week. So, you know, from a standpoint of just football world at large and the Georgetown community, the sport's been unbelievable. And speaking of last game, your defense came up big for you guys. Three interceptions, one pick six. How do you hope to evolve on that play from last week? You know, for us, once we got into the second half, I think we started playing a little bit of Georgetown football. So, you know, we talked tonight about just one man, one job, and really not worrying about the entire night, just worrying about it play by play. That's how we've attacked the entire week. And a year ago, almost to the day, you got your first win as head coach of Georgetown football against this Marist squad, a 27-7 victory. Does that make tonight's matchup any more interesting or special for you? Just being home and playing at night in front of the Georgetown crowd is important to me. You know, Coach Parody's done such a great job with Marist over the years. I've coached against them for probably 18 seasons. So they're a very good football team, well coached. They had a great game last week against a really good Bucknell team. So really tonight we're worried about the Hoyas and just, like I said, want to get, get to kick off and take it one play at a time. All right, thank you, Coach. Good luck tonight. And, of course, Marissa referred to Ty Williams injured in the matchup against St. Francis last week. Uh, Williams suffering a neck injury in that contest. You see footage on your screen of that last week. Again, he underwent surgery. Um, obviously, Scott, wishing, wishing nothing but the best for Ty Williams. Absolutely, wishing nothing but the best and uh, hope everything comes out well for him. And, you know, you, you think about that game at Georgetown. This happens in the first quarter. To go on and play a football game, that must have been very difficult. No one, not only you're losing an important player, but a teammate, somebody you care for. And, and they knew it was serious. When you see an ambulance come out of the field anytime, that, that's extremely serious. So it must have been difficult for the Hoyas tonight. You know, they're going to honor uh, their teammate here with, with the uh, helmets and the number. And, you know, hopefully the Hoyas can, uh, you know, respond well here in front of the home ground. Let's go ahead and get more from Marissa Pella. 
Well, if you're wondering what Georgetown football stands for, look no further than head coach Rob Scarlatta's office. Hanging above his desk is a crest that he helped create that he really thinks encompasses what he wants his team to represent. The first part is four for 40, which represents these athletes' four-year commitment they made to this university. The next part, men for others, which really believe, which plays into the Jesuit beliefs here at Georgetown and also their commitment to giving back to their community. Now, finally, is the word Sisu. Sisu is a Finnish word with no direct English translation, but coach told me it means courage in the face of adversity. He got the inspiration for this word from former Hora Yanni Curry. Curry made a remarkable recovery from a serious spinal injury he had back in 2005. And given the Hoya's recent uh, incident they had with Ty Williams, Coach really hopes these three words start to resonate with his team even more. They're actually even wearing these rubber bracelets with the word Sisu on it, just as a final reminder of what they're really playing this game for. Thank you much, Marissa. Obviously, uh, the team will be looking to go ahead and play their best. You see there some support. Brendan Gone, the NASCAR driver, the Georgetown graduate, uh, a tweet of support also going to be with the color scheme at the race at Richmond this weekend with the paint job going to be supporting Ty That's Williams. That's fantastic. That really is nice. And obviously gone, you know, played for John Thompson Jr. as a basketball player at Georgetown, has always really worn the navy blue uh, and the blue and gray very, very proudly, and obviously doing that as well. Also saw, I believe, uh, some other uh, tweets and some other videos of support for Ty Williams. So obviously that is what a lot of folks in this Georgetown community have come together and done. We're going to take a quick break as we bring you with pride our national anthem. And a wonderful performance of our national anthem. You look at weather today, Scott, could be an issue. It rained a lot earlier, pretty dry right now. But obviously, you can see it's a little bit overcast. Yeah, it is a little bit overcast. And uh, it's nice out there, though. It's, it's a good night for football, we hope. As you say, it stays dry. And if uh, we catch a break there, uh, I think we'll have a uh, good setting for football here tonight. And, and I think these two teams, you know, as we talked about, opportunity for both of them. This is a... You know, this, this is a rivalry that's, that's gone on for a while now. They have the 18th meeting between these two schools. And Marist, it actually only won one time here at Georgetown, but it happened the last time they were here. Yeah. So. And obviously the, the Red Foxes were looking for a win after falling last year. Georgetown kind of put it on them, uh, saw some big plays in that game be big for Georgetown. And again today, when you look at this contest, these I think both teams come to this one saying to themselves, hey, this is definitely a winnable game for us. Yeah, I think both teams should feel confident about the, the things they do and the problems they could create for the other team. And, uh, you know, it's, it, again, if you're Georgetown, you know, home field is so important to establish that early in a season. You know, you want to win all your home games, obviously, but in particular the first one to, uh, you know, to get your fan base excited and get them to get back out here uh, for a night. And I think we're going to have a good crowd out here tonight as it's filling in nicely. And, you know, again, as you said, hopefully the, uh, the weather break has uh, encouraged more people to come out. And it's funny, Coach Scarlotta kind of talked about that, saying, hey, this is – Almost an opportunity for us to sell our program yeah. 
Going to have a lot of students here because of the late game time. Hey, they're college students. It's tough sometimes to get for that noontime start, but a <laughs> 6 o'clocker and you play very well, you're going to go ahead and get a chance to uh, to go ahead and see exactly, uh, you know, show your wares and let the other the kids, the students, the fans come out and see what you can do as a program. Absolutely. You, you, you are right about that. The college kids, this is a perfect time for a game for them because they're just getting going. Uh, so this is a, gr a great timing for them. And, Again, Georgetown uh, you know, wants, to, wants to protect their house tonight in Maris. I'll say this, coming in tonight over the, the Key Bridge, quite a few Maris flags and uh -huh. fans coming in, following the team buses as I was uh, coming over here to the stadium. So they got some support, and they have some local kids on the team as well. So I'm sure that helps. But uh, So they, they've got a pretty good uh, thing going over there on the uh, on the far side of the field as we, we see the shot right now behind the Maris bench. Yeah, I see a lot of red here today. Also some navy blue, a lot of it for Georgetown. Looking at some what Georgetown has done, of course, it's just through one game, but the stats not kind to Georgetown last week. These were some keys but really have to improve. The first downs, third down conversions kind of go hand in hand. Both ways, yeah. Obviously, those got to be better. Yeah, I mean, you look at the offensive side, 4-13, you're not going to win any football games doing that. And defensively, you can't have a team over 50% on you as, as they did last week. So that, that's something certainly they've, they've got to prove on here tonight and uh, give their offense an opportunity to sustain some things and, you know, defensively maybe, maybe you know, create some turnovers, get your offense in a short field and, and get some momentum here early and, and get this crowd into it. Get the crowd a reason to be excited here early, Jeremy. Well, you saw the coin toss. Georgetown deferred to the second half. Maris goes ahead. They'll take their option and will receive. Doing the kicking honors today for Georgetown. It'll be Ben Pretty, their kickoff specialist, and back deep for the uh, Maris Red Foxes. Clay will be back there, also joined alongside by Lawrence Dickens. So almost ready for football here on the Hilltop. Georgetown and Maris both coming in 0-1 on the season, both looking for that all-important first win of the year. Scott referred to a little bit earlier about uh, honoring Tyrell Williams. We may get into this a little bit more in depth later on, but you can see on the helmets today, usually the Hoyas with these blue helmets will be wearing uh, their, their own numbers on the sides today, though, just wearing Ty Williams' number on the right side, almost Pittsburgh Steeler-esque. And again, hoping to honor him with a big win today. Pretty. About to get it underway. And the Hoyas home campaign is open with Pretty's kickoff. Going to be taken just at the five yard line up the field, looking for a seam. Spun down at the 25 is Lawrence Dickens. So Maris will scrimmage from there, first and 10. Looks like uh, Troy Bullock got in there and got a hand on the, on the knees and, and took him down. Good uh, coverage there by the Hoyas. You know, that, that first kickoff, I'm, I'm sure the coaches always hold their breath when you're covering those things. You want to make sure. Uh, that you, you don't let one out, out early. And that starting lineup for the Marist Red Foxes, Ed Oxiger, the starting quarterback, really the most experienced quarterback for the Marist Red Foxes. That's one of the reasons why he's under center. Yeah, and Oxiger did not have a whole lot of success last week uh, against Bucknell. We'll see what uh, he has in store for the Hoyas defense here. Oxinger fakes the handoff, looking deep. Now he's going to pull it down, try to run. He's got some space. Eventually will dive ahead, be brought down just across the 30-yard line. So a nice three-yard scramble for Oxinger. Yeah, good coverage downfield by the Hoyas. He really had nowhere to go, but uh, give the uh, quarterback some credit there. Did a good job keeping his eyes downfield, but also find a little scrambling lane to pick up some yardage. And they're trying to get a quick tempo here, obviously, without the huddle. See the starters there, obviously. Some of the guys to watch. Kislik also Navaki on the other side for the Hoyas, trying to provide some pass rush. Now, just as quickly, you see this a lot, yeah. Scott, where you fake like you're going to snap it and get that look, and then the coach calls another play. It's like uh, watching Duke with David Cutcliffe. They, <laughs> they do a lot of this. They hurry up to get up there just to turn over and look. Uh, get a little bit of that Peyton Manning stuff as well. Oxiger joined out of an offset back by Calhoun. He'll throw it out in the flat. This one will be complete, I believe, just short of the sticks, pulled in by Dickens. Yeah, nice catch by Dickens, and he took a shot there too, didn't he? Uh, he paid for it, but uh, nice play, and it does look like, yeah, indeed, they're waving up the chains. It is a first down, and uh, like many teams in college football, Maris runs out of the spread, and they uh, exclusively out of the shotgun, but they do like to mix it up. They do like to find balance, but obviously you hear early uh, going to the air. Coach Scarlotta said this Maris team is a lot like us. They run a lot of the same things, a lot of spread, different things, and that kind of different St. Francis last week, a team that really was a power-based team. This is a different look. 
so rare to see power base teams now. It's kind of funny when you, when you say that, but in college football, so much spread. And there's finally a handoff. And Calhoun's going to get to the outside. It'll be taken Calhoun. down. Gets just across the, uh, just short of the 40-yard line. About a two-yard gain. I believe Daniel Yankovic came up to make the stop. Good job by the Hoyas there setting the edge, too. Didn't get, get much room. Uh, maybe got a yard and uh, did a really nice job of not allowing him to get outside. Yankovic, usually a safety. Some thinness in the linebacking quarter to injury for the Hoyas. So Yankovic will come up play outside backer. And Scott, as you'll see throughout the game, he hits like a load of bricks. Yeah, that's what you want. I mean, how versatile, too, to be able to move from safety than to play linebacker and have no problems to be able to make plays the line of scrimmage and, and tackle well. And that's going to be key for Georgetown. Again, tackling well tonight. And so far, they've done a good job with that. Balance spread for Oxiger, throws the quick screen pass out in the flat, pulled down. It'll be number 82, Joe Jordan, after a minimal gain. Matt Satchel, nice job there. The uh, captain, the linebacker there, uh, making a sound tackle and coming up and uh, really just uh, giving a minimal gain there. So uh, Georgetown's got it in the right situation here with third and long uh, for Marist. Satchel, one of the captains on this team, I believe was second leading tackler last year on the team and fourth leading tackler in the Patriot League. Oxiger back to pass, out in the flat, and big hit, and what a play coming up from the safety spot. Garrett Powers to Stone Calhoun and force a punt. Great tackling by the Hoyas in this first series. Exactly what we talked about in the keys. Very sound. Maris didn't get anything after the catch, and that was a tremendous play. Garrett Powers sniffed it out right away. And I think Maris probably, Oxiger has got to do a better job of selling that. I think he locked in a little too early, and it was obvious it was going to be a screen. Mike Macaron on to kick. Jake DeSico back for the Hoyas. Had the punt return duties last year, doing again this year. Macaron, tail wagger, waving away, trying to get the guys out. It'll go out of bounds right around the 35-yard line as you see Coach Luke Thompson trying to point out exactly where that one goes yeah. out. Instead, though, it'll be the Hoyas with a nice field position after the uh, nice three and out. Yeah, really good field position for the Hoyas here. That's key, I mean, in a game where you think it may be tight, Win that field position battle early, Georgetown able to do that. And again, can't say enough about you give up the one first down, but just really sound tackling by Georgetown on that first drive. Yeah, my mistake did have the one first down, but after that, the Hoya defense kind of standing up. You see the starters there, the guys we talked about, also some folks who are in there. Justin Hill, a guy really to look for a big play threat for the Hoyas at the wide receiver spot. Fake the handoff, Nolan going to throw it deep. He's got a man open, and it's going to be complete and out of bounds just over the 35-yard line. It's Harry Glore with the big play wide open. He really got wide open behind the, the secondary there, and uh, Maris appeared to get lost. And Kyle Nolan took a shot, but it's unfortunately coming back. Mm. And you hear the referee there, a high-low chop block there. Oh, that's unfortunate. You can't, oh, man, that's, those are the things that keep coaches up at night, uh, Jeremy, because you had a big play. You had the look. You had everything, what you thought it would be probably, you know, studying all week, working on that, and uh, one penalty just wipes it out. See the starting lineup for the Marist Red Fox is Jesse Monero back in the lineup after sitting out last week with an injury. Yeah, and again, we got to watch the big guy, uh, Demetrius Williams, number 96, for, for – uh, for Marist, he is, he'll wreck some havoc there on the right side of the defense. So Hoyas all the way back at their own 22-yard line. Need to take it out to the 47 for a first down. Nolan, quick pass, looking for Glore too low and incomplete. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, again, Georgetown, you hurt yourself with a penalty, then you come out there and you miss a receiver there. Not, not exactly the way you, you drew it up. So you got second and 25 now. they got to really be careful here, too, to, with the football in their own end to be smart with these plays. The momentum boost would have been huge if that play had stood, but instead, looking at long chains here, Maris showing blitz. Nolan fakes the handoff to Compella. Got some open receivers. He's going to go deep once again, and this one to Seco. They're going to say out of oh. bounds, does not get the foot down. Tough break there for Georgetown because he had to seek a – that's a tough ball to throw. You're rolling to your opposite side there, rolling left, throwing across your body. But Nolan, you know, just, just a little bit too far there, it looks like. And we'll check the replay here again as Nolan showing off some of the tools you yeah. really like from him. I really do. He can, he can throw to the run. It's just a little bit further ahead of the receiver than he needed to be. Just ran out of space over there. DeSico was unable to drag that foot. You know, one of the things, too, I want to say, too, about Marist and Georgetown's offensive line, so we put to the test here. 
the 3-3-5 three, three, really helps disguise blitzes and where they're coming from. So you really got to be smart as an offensive line. Nolan's got some time. He'll throw this one deep. This one will be caught, and he might have a first down. Again, Nolan, I like, I like him on the move. Uh, he makes a nice throw there, go, rolling a little bit right, buys himself some time, and always keeps his eyes downfield, Jeremy. A lot of quarterbacks don't do that when they scramble. They just, just go, but he's, he's looking to throw the football downfield. I believe that was a 24-yard gain, as I think they were standing and looking at a fir, uh, fourth, uh, third, excuse me, in 23. Nolan going deep. Can he get a receiver here? That one's going to be incomplete. Looking for Glor once again. Cannot hook up. Well, Georgetown, I'd say I love, I love the aggressiveness immediately of this passing game. They're just coming out, and they obviously saw something on film that they thought they could exploit with Maris throwing the ball deep, and they're, they are really stretching the field here early. And it's interesting because we were talking about, hey, they got to get the run going with uh, get Bell on, but we haven't seen him touch the ball yet. Maybe, maybe this is the setup to, to get Maris a little bit on their heels. Could very well be. The old Bill Walsh line, the pass sets up the run, and Georgetown trying to stretch out that Maris defense. Setting up a screen, Compella has it at the 50-yard line, spins off one tackler and lunges forward, and what could have been a minimal gain to no gain ends up five yards. And that's the part about Capella we were talking about in the pregame. He's tough. He's not just a flashy, fast guy. He'll lower his shoulder. He'll take the hit. He'll spin off of it as he did there and get the extra yards. That was all him to get those five yards in a third and manageable now as opposed to maybe a third and ten or third and nine or wherever you would have been uh, taken down there. Joel Compella, tougher than some old saddle leather, comes from the Lone Star State in Texas. Of course, originally from the Congo. Third and five, need to get it up to the 42-yard line for a first down. Nolan taking his time, nine on the play clock. Looking over the middle, now he'll go ahead and flip it out, and that will be incomplete, too high for Compella, and likely Georgetown going to punt it here. Yeah, it looks like they're going to punt it. It's tough because he had him. He just, he just a little... A little bit high there, his feet got a little bit off, a little crossed up, and Nolan just overthrows him there. And Georgetown, I'll say this about their offensive line in these first few plays, they've done a nice job picking up the pressure on Marist. And uh, by using that extra part of the play clock, too, I think they've helped see where that rush is coming from. And actually, you should uh, credit there on, uh, the play by Marist on defense. That was Alex Spies who pressured Nolan to kind of get him off balance when he made that throw. Harry McCollum's punt, edging for the coffin corner and does a pretty good job of it. It'll go out of bounds inside the 10-yard line, mark it at the 9, and a first down for Maris from there. But you have to like if you're Rob Scarlatta, you're winning the field position battle right now. And you have to do that. Basic things, you know, very simple things. Not exciting all the time, but th that's important. I mean, you know, you, you pin him down. You, you got a couple, you know, you got a first down, a big first down on a third and long. Wasn't all bad for Georgetown there. Uh, you know, made some plays, and obviously the penalty really killed them in the end, but I think you've got to be encouraged if you're Rob Scarlotta after that first drive to see, you know, you got a lot of ideas of things that you can exploit throughout this football game, perhaps. See Rob Scarlotta's coaching resume there, talking to Kyle Nolan on the sidelines. Obviously, some good things done by Nolan. Want to clean a few things up, maybe make it a touchdown drive next time. Handoff up the middle to Clay. He's going to be banged down after a gain of two, maybe three on the play. Yeah, good defense there by Georgetown in the middle, not to give up too much, although uh, Clay, you know, pretty rugged guy, was able to, to bounce that into a four-yard gain, which appeared to be next to nothing when he when he first took the ball. He's normally their third down back, and uh, senior this time getting a little action here uh, to start this drive off. And also his twin brother, Dylan Clay, plays a significant part on this Marist offense. Oxiger in the shotgun, three wide receivers. Looking long, that one's going to be incomplete as he was going for the tight end, Gardner. Couldn't hook up. Yeah, Matt Satch with really good coverage, jumped the route, and then they, they had somebody, a defender coming from behind as well. Georgetown did. I think that was uh, Aker over there. So they, they really cut, sniffed that out very well. And Maris now in a tough spot here, third and six. You don't want to uh, be punting from your own end zone. Jim Parity saw his coaching resume there. One more win would have even him up at 500 for his career. He's 119 and 120 also one tie. You know you've been coaching for a while. There's a tie as they got rid of that about 20 years ago. Yeah, and he's uh, been in every one of these Georgetown Maris games. He's been the head coach for all of them. Oxiger, nothing there. He's going to scramble. Might have first down yardage. Believe he's going to come up just short. Good mm. job by the Hoyas to react. Hoyas have really reacted nicely out there defensively. Really flying to the ball and it's, it's not just, you know, it's, it's, it's a group effort and they're really getting after it here and forcing a, a punt. That's a big series there by the defense after you pinned them back. Let's see, Oxiger 
Showing off a little bit of wheels there, but Hoyas did a good job to get off their men and get that stop. So again, Maris. Lowry did a good job shooting up there too. Maris' second punt of the game is Macaroon back out there. And again, DeSico will stand just outside his 40-yard line. This one's going to be angled toward the sidelines. DeSico is going to call for the fair catch, and he'll grab it just over the 50-yard line around the 48. Great field position for the Hoyas. And again, you can't say enough about the defense really setting that up. And, of course, the special teams before that with a the, with the solid effort punting the ball in the coffin corner. And then now you've you're, you got a half a field, essentially, to uh, try to try to get some points on the board. And... We saw early on the Hoyas with some big plays, and that's been an issue for this team. It was an issue last year, a bit of an issue last week of just not getting big chunks and having to do everything kind of piecemeal. If you're the Hoyas, I think you have to like that. You just have to hope some of those big plays are remaining. Yeah, exactly. Just try to cut out the penalties on those big plays. But And Kyle Nolan uh, you know, has, has shown he can do some things here tonight in the passing game against this uh, Red Fox defense. Nolan again joined by Kempella. Fox is showing pressure once again. Nolan's going to throw it out. Got to Seco. Got close to the first down yard. He's going to step out of bounds about a yard short. That was a nice route and uh, good job by Nolan. It had, again, give the offensive line a lot of credit. Had time, was able to step into his throw. Feet were set and, and fired a bullet. Picking up the blitz perfectly. Georgetown's really identifying where the pressure's trying to come from for Maris. You have to wonder, as Coach said, this is a lot like us. It's some of that kind of wearing off the same things you see in practice kind of happening here as you see that pressure. Read option here. Nolan going to keep it. Now he's just going to bury it and try and go forward. He's going to a yard run. back as he loses one and will set up a third and two. Yeah, that, just, that never developed. And, you know, good job by Maris to, uh, to set the edge there and not allow him to, to get around there and, and obviously take away the pitch from him. Let's send it down to our Marissa Pella. Well, the Hoyas definitely have a different look on the field compared to last games. So they did, they have different jerseys, but they also have new helmets. This is the first time ever that their helmets haven't been silver. And on the left side of the helmet is the individual player's number, but on the right side is Ty Williams' number, number two. So just another way they're showing support for their injured teammate. He's always on their mind, and they're playing for him tonight. Thank you, Marissa. Joel Compella. First time it didn't work, Scott. Second time it did. That was a beautiful run by Compella. Got a good uh, crease there to get up the middle, and then the rest of it was on him. Got an extra five yards with his toughness. And the fake now out to Buckman, who's going to break one tackle, stays in bounds. He'll be close to the sticks again. And Matt Buckman's been a weapon for this team last year. Had a close to think second on the team in catches, that leader in touchdowns, I believe. And again, showing some great things there. Yeah, nothing fancy from Kyle Nolan. He's just getting the ball out quickly into his receivers so they can make plays. You know, you know, there's a little bit behind the receiver, actually. Nice adjustment uh, there by Buckman to catch it and to still have the wherewithal to, to fight downfield and gain those extra yards. Brings up a second and two. Again, Hoyas staying in this spread set with a tight end. Quick pass out on the screen. Hill's got some room. He's going to have the first down. He's going to have more. Ends up being taken down inside the 20 around the 16-yard line. And right now, Kyle Nolan's firing it at will. He is, and he's getting rid of it quickly. He's decisive. He knows where he wants to go. And, and you know, playmakers are making plays for him. Justin Hill there making a couple guys miss to get that extra yardage. And we got a you know 11-yard gain out of that play, which was really just a simple out route. So first and 10. First time inside the red zone for the Hoyas. Nolan's got three receivers one way. He'll go ahead and keep it now. Use his feed, and he'll get it down to the 10-yard line. And that's one of the underrated aspects of his game, Scott, is the fact that he's 6'5", but he can run. He's got good feet. I mean, you can see that in the pocket even when he's when he's on the run throwing, but he has good feet. And, yeah, you, you know, he's not going to run away from anybody, but he eluded enough people there with, with just some savvy moves to move a little left, a little right, and then find the opening. So the three receivers actually now an empty backfield as Capella goes out into the slot. Play clock down under 10. As Mayer is showing pressure and Hoya Lyman jumped here and we'll see. They're going to say a false start. I believe that's going to go on Kevin Liddy, the senior captain. Yeah, he got, got a little uh, up in his stance there and, uh, you know, Maris made him pay for it too. Heady play by uh, the Maris defense to go ahead and jump and point. Because once he rocks, you can go. And those are the kind of things you just don't want to see if you're the Hoyas. You know, second and six. Now you're looking at a second 11. Uh, you don't, you don't want to go backwards down here. 
It's one of the things there against, and had to sit in that stand for a long time against a pressure team. You're just gonna kinda wanna move a little bit. That snaps low and Nolan's gonna jump on top of it. And now the Hoyas after a great drive so far, two straight plays of some trouble. Yeah, Maris, uh, I tell you, I think a little bit of what they're doing to the line of scrimmage there too may have caused the caused the snap and the anxiety with the offensive line and could have also been the reason why uh, Liddy before on the play before was rocking a little bit, but they doing some things defensively. Again, they, they can disguise these blitz as well in this 3-3-5. Three, three, Georgetown, for the most part, has, has really done a good job identifying picking it up, but there's obviously been some confusion on these last couple plays. Nolan staring down a third and 15 here. Need to get it down to the eight for a first down. Maris moving on that defensive front. Some pressure. Nolan out in the flat. It's going to be caught by DeSico. He'll get some of it back, but he'll be brought down around the 15-yard line. So Hoyas going to go ahead and have to attempt the field goal. Yeah, Miguel Sandoval made that happen for uh, Maris because he's the guy who comes in number 44 of the pressure and uh, got up in the air there and you know caused uh, Nolan to, to make a quicker decision maybe than he wanted to in his progressions. He had to go to the, to the uh, outside receiver there quickly and obviously you know in that situation your receivers gonna have to make the play when you're throwing underneath the chains like that. Henry Darmstadter on to kick out of the hold of Nolan. High snap put down. Darmstadter's kick is up and this will be good. So the Hoyas break the ice and Rob Scarlotta happy on the sideline comes all the way out to greet his team after his team gets on the board first. Yeah, a lot of positives for Georgetown so far here, defensively in particular. The special teams have been really good, have been a, have been a, a plus at this point. Uh, just a couple little things, Jeremy, have hurt them offensively. A couple penalties, obviously the muff snap, uh, the play after the penalty here really took away any chance Georgetown had to, to get six, uh, you know, on, on this drive and, and get in the end zone. So, but uh, overall, Georgetown's got to be encouraged, you know, the early lead here. And, it's always better to play with a lead than to play for behind. Mama Lucia, down home Italian cooking. Visit any of our eight locations in the Metro Washington area. For more information, visit the website at www.mamaluciarestaurants.com. And Georgetown Catering provides the university and its surrounding community with exceptional catering experiences. Whether it's a simple luncheon or breakfast buffet, theme party, or formal black tie event, Georgetown Catering is sure to exceed your expectations to your every need. Visit them online at georgetowncatering.com. You're making me hungry, Jeremy. I mean, you're talking about pizza and then catering. I mean, it's... Yeah, should throw in a bank uh, commercial in there. We got some of those, too. So Georgetown with the early 3-0 lead. Just under four minutes to play. And again, I think, Scott, you'd have to say that Georgetown's kind of taken a fight to Maris so yep, far. They have. They really have. And um, I think, you know, field position's obviously big here. And that's why this kickoff will be interesting, how they cover it. And if Maris can get any momentum with some field position here. Dickens is going to take it. Trying to find a seam. A flag is going to go down. And I think this is going to pin Maris deep back in their own territory. Gets it out to the 24. But referee indicating a hold. Yeah, that's the exact thing that Coach Parody didn't want from his special teams when he, when he sent him out there was to, to back up his team even further because this has been their problem so far uh, in this first quarter is they've been playing you know from behind so to speak in the negative yardage in their own territory and once again they're going to have to uh, start deep in their own territory and try to get some first downs and, and get themselves out of this uh, hole they've been in on the field position so far. You referred to it earlier on Scott series record Georgetown pretty good against Maris. Yeah, and, and again, Marist uh, is only one at Georgetown once, but it did happen the last time they were here, which is in 2013, a 43-23 win. So first and 10, now empty backfield, except for Oxiger. He's going to look to throw it out in the flat. This one will be complete. And lunging forward and is Trolley, who's going to get it out to around the 15-yard line, maybe just short. Yeah, they're just trying to get the ball in Trolley's hands at this point because, you know, we haven't seen much of him. Here's a all-conference player, uh, you know, preseason pick there, and uh, the slot receiver this year, and he's second all-time in the school in, in uh, receptions. You see why he's got good hands and uh, can move with the ball when he gets it in his hands. But Georgetown overall, again, tackling well defensively so far. Scott maybe showing blitz. He'll back out of it. Handoff goes to Calhoun up the middle, and Calhoun's got a lot of room to run. It'll be his legs cut out from under him by David Akiri coming up. That'll be more than enough for a first down. Nice cut by Calhoun to uh, really set that thing up, and he did, a, uh, he did a good job finding the hole and just finding the green space to get them a first down. And Marist, again, they, they talk about balance, and that's key for them. But really to this point, we have not seen much of the run, but that was an encouraging play uh, for the Red Foxes. 
Couple backups in there now. Kendall catching now on the defensive line. Brian Jefferson out there as well. Hoyas showing blitz. They'll come, pass over the middle. That one's going to be incomplete again, looking for Trolley and couldn't hook up. Uh, it's surprising to see Trolley drop that one. I mean, he, he had him, he, and the ball was right there. I mean, you could say it had to stop a little bit, slow down a little bit for it, but that's when he's got to make the catch, and I think he would admit that. That's why he's the frustration. He's just walking back uh, to the huddle, or to the line of scrimmage. There is no huddle. What am I thinking? <laughs> there, there are no huddles in college football anymore. Uh, Really interesting, Scott. I saw a stat that he has four or more receptions in every game for the last two seasons. Yeah, that's pretty consistent, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> so he's definitely a go-to guy. And as I said, they moved him to the slot this year, which I was going to present some mismatches uh, for opposing defenses. Oxiger out in the flat. It's going to be completed, and a flag's going to come in, and this will be interesting to see what this is. I'd be interested to see what the call is, too, because it looked like he could have maybe called offensive pass interference here. You're right, Eagle Eye. That's exactly what it was, offensive pass interference. And, Scott, you see it so much now with all the spread offenses and the screen game type stuff, you're going to see that call. Yeah, it looked like they were trying to set up a screen, and then, you know, you may have even had a push off. Pass interference, offense number 11. Yeah, that's, that's a screen because that was not the receiver. That was Clay, one of the twins. Right there, that's, I don't know on that one. I mean, we, we, you see it a lot ever since that I've Notre Dame. I've seen worse than that one. <laughs> ever since that Notre Dame-Florida State game, you're yeah. seeing more of the, the egregious, I'm going to block you type picks called, but it kind of looked a little rubbish yeah, to me, we'll it did. see. But. I almost thought that it, when I first saw it, they were getting trolley for, for pushing off to get the separation there. But Georgetown with maybe a little bit of a break there. I'm sure they'll, they'll be happy to take it. A second and long. Georgetown faced one of these earlier. Now Maris will. They're going to go deep. This one's going to be picked off. David Akiri has it at the 30-yard line. Cuts it back at the 20. Cuts it back again at the 15-yard line. Stays on his feet. Now may have gotten face mask as the flag goes down. And David Akiri with one big play right there. And the Hoyas are going to be in great position after it. Oxiger just flat out missed his wide receiver, Joe Jordan, there. Overthrow, and then the play is made, obviously, by Akiri. And uh, great hands, and the ball just came right to him. But just the overthrow, as you'll see it here, going to Jordan, just missed him by a lot. A great presence of mind by Kiri, and he definitely got face masked right here at the end of this play, at the end of the run. You see it right there. That hurts, too. <laughs> so that's going to go ahead and be half the distance to the goal. So the Hoyas will be in prime position to put a touchdown on the board. Well, you know, those right guards, it's rare they get to try to tackle somebody, and they're just looking for anything they can there. At that point, you're just trying to save a touchdown. And, and Sean Foley, the senior, fifth-year senior for uh, the Red Foxes, just got a piece of the uh, face mask. And so uh, Hoyas are in great position here. Check out the moves by David Akiri in the open field. And, you know, he was known last year as a big-time playmaker, especially early in the season. And uh, he makes a big play right there. Those are the things that you dream about as a defensive back uh, <laughs> going into a game. I mean, as a free safety, you're going to get some opportunities, maybe a handful of game to, to get your hand on the football or to break one up. And, you know, that one just perfectly to him. And, again, uh, Ed Oxiger just, just overthrew his man and put it in the worst possible place. So there was uh, really good Hoyas coverage there. Now the Hoyas going with an empty backfield here on first and goal at the nine-yard line. Nolan. Going to go for the fade in the corner. Does he get defeated? He does. Touchdown, Georgetown Hoyas as Justin Hill with the great catch in the corner of the end zone. Wow, Justin Hill just goes up and gets it. And, you know, good throw by Kyle Lowen. Put it where only your receiver can get it. As we watch the replay here, here's Justin Hill just making a play, doing what playmakers do. 6'2", 205 junior, and he can get up too, as you see there. What a great job to get the feet down. Uh-oh, let's get the Hoyas here, a little bit of muddle huddle on the uh, extra point. Now they set up. Muddle huddle, swinging gate. It has yeah. a lot of different names. And one of those plays, you want to see if the defense lines up to it. Coach Parody's troops do. And now the extra point, conventional style, up and good. So the Georgetown Hoyas couldn't get a much better start than this, Scott, as they're up 10 nothing. Yeah, and you hear the fans that are in front of us here, Jeremy. There's a lot to be excited about right here with this Georgetown team. I mean, it's been all three phases, too. I mean, 
certainly the offense is again a great throw by Kyle Nolan. And again, he's getting pressure. I mean, he's stepping up into some a rush today and, and getting it away just in time. He's making quick decisions. He's believing what he sees and, and really firing the football uh, tonight. And then they're doing a good job exploiting this Maris secondary thus far. Yeah, and I think it's one of those things, Scott, play, yards, if you six, protect six, Kyle six. Nolan, he can do some special Kyle things, Nolan, and he's doing it right now. Hill. Yeah, and getting impressed with the way he's throwing the football tonight. And obviously, this was a game plan coming in. I mean, we're, we're sitting here talking about Capella and running the football, and Georgetown's come out firing away <laughs> on this defense. And clearly, they felt there was a good matchup for them. And I, I like the way their offensive line has protected Nolan. And even when they've let a free runner through, he's done a good job knowing he can see the rush so he can get rid of the football and, and still make plays. To the last meeting, Georgetown with a big win last year, had some big plays on defense. Phil Novaki, the defensive end, had a 48-yard interception return touchdown. But today, Scott, it's been the offense with the big plays. Yeah, they made some big plays. Of course, they had one big play taken away because of a penalty, and it still uh, worked out well for Georgetown. You know, again, it's all three phases. The, the special teams did a great job pinning back Marist to this point, and Marist has been playing on the negative end of the field uh, throughout this football game. So pretty again on to kickoff. Same folks back deep, Clay and Dickens for Marist. High kick, again, going to be taken by Dickens just outside his five-yard line, looking for a seam. He's going to be crunched down just across the 20-yard line. Few players for the Hoyas getting in there and making some big sticks, including Jethro Francois. Can't say enough about Georgetown special teams. Again, special teams, you know, people uh, overlook it many times. It's so important. It's such a tone setter. Uh, for a football game. And you look how excited the sideline gets, these big plays the teams have made, the punt team with the, with a great coffin corner. Kickoff coverage has been terrific. Of course, you made a field goal. So this is what's kind of been the jump starter for, for this football game and for the Hoyas. First and 10, Oxiger is going to hand it off. Calhoun's going to be taken down after a gain of six. We're going to go ahead, to me, two. We're going to get it down to our Marissa Pill on the sidelines. Well, he used to wear the number 22, but this year, senior running back Joel Campella is wearing the number 35. And for good reason. He is the most recent recipient of the number 35 Joe Ekobachi Memorial jersey. It goes to the player who best embodies the spirit of the late Hoya captain. And Joel said it was truly a blessing to be honored with this jersey. And he was also honored by his teammates as he was selected as captain this year. It's a responsibility he takes very seriously and said he hopes to lead the team by example on and off the field. But if you can imagine, his story doesn't end there. He was actually born in the De uh, Democratic Republic of the Congo and moved to Dallas when he was six. It was in Dallas where he was first introduced to the game of football and found inspiration from Chiefs running back Larry Johnson. I had the opportunity to talk with Joel the other day and I asked him who he now tries to emulate and he said he compares his game to that of Adrian Peterson, so we can expect some big things out of the new number, 35. And a big play coming from the Hoya defense, coming from the side. I believe that was Lorenz Griggs with the pressure. Blaze Brown, excuse me, with the pressure. A couple other guys getting back there for the big stop. That was a huge stop by Georgetown's defense in a third and long. And uh, we'll watch here the replay. So Brown getting back there, Novaki as well. Good job, too, just jumping out. Georgetown with Brown getting, the, uh, getting in there, the freshman. 